Okay, all that is. Only take That's bad, don't play with me. I'm not playing with you. It's all I say we we and they going to the bathroom. No, that's that's not that's not what I was gonna say. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna uh, say food, you, No, do you understand? Oh, uh, mercy buckets. That's it, we pump one day. Not this time of day. <laughs> I asked you, do you understand English? <laughs> oh, that's all, nephew. Nephews. <laughs> Man. What did you say you taught me at home? I asked you in four different languages what time it is. No one told me what time it is yet. Oh, it's 10 33. 10 33. You said Kesa, what'd you say? Kesa Diaz. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. I said, I'm hungry too. Yeah. That's the little knuckles with the meat on top of it. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus in the building. All hats on. All hats on. All right, we can make this place sound like there's 40 people here. Jesus in the building. All hats on. Jesus in the building. All hats on. That sounds so much better. Amen. Amen. We can make four voices sound like 40 voices. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a walk through... The book of Psalms, chapter 25, beginning at verse 1. Amen. And then we're going to, if you want to prepare a little early to go to um, 1 John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. That's to prepare for later on in the lesson. But we're going to start in Psalms, chapter 25. Beginning at verse 1. Confirmation. <clears throat> Yesterday, I spent a lot of time here at JITB just meditating, going over some, you know, my business plan as, um, as Miss Aisha Brinkley said that she wanted me to make a business plan. And it's been, it's been in the works for quite some time. But yesterday I was able to really sit down and be ministered to as far as my business plan and spend some time with God, spend some time in the Word yesterday and had a very productive meeting and did spend some more time with God later on. So I spent maybe, maybe about nine, ten hours here yesterday. Amen. Amen. It was, it was amazing. Now, I, I, I know that I want to do that more often. Um, to dwell in this secret place and spend time with the Father to hear him speak to me. Um, sometimes you need to get away to, you know, clear your head, you know. My LA trip did the same thing, and yesterday was just nothing short of amazing. I was able to hear God speak about a few things. And I know I knew I had to get prepared today for some reason. And the Bible said, be ready. And this the pastor Mike said, you ready for tomorrow? I said, I, I, I can be. I spent enough time with him today. I'm pretty sure he gave me a lot of ammo. And this morning when he laid it on me, I said, oh, Shema Monday. Jesus. <laughs> so I asked God, what do you want me to teach on? And it's something that I t um, taught on on a prayer line a few days ago, which is Psalms 25. And I just wanted to reiterate that today. And good morning to all of you that are here. I thank God for your presence because you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to get up and come to the ITV this morning, so we thank God for your presence and your obedience. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for being able to humble ourselves and come before your presence, Lord, and worship the name of the Lord. Father God, we glorify and magnify your name on today, God. We thank you, Lord, for the lesson that you have prepared for your people. Move your servant out of the way, Lord, and have your way on today, God. We thank you, Lord, as you prepare this place for the arrival of your children, of the saints of God, and the people of God to come and receive a word from a, a word from you. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise due your name, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have mercy on us, God. Use us, God, for your glory. In Christ's name we pray and for your sake and give thanks. Amen. 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 <clears throat> So, I started studying, I, Psalms 25, 
did exactly what the notes that I took down said. It's a prayer of deliverance. It's a prayer of deliverance, a prayer of guidance, a prayer for forgiveness, and most importantly, a prayer for humility. And we've been teaching on humility for a while. And people have struggled with humbling themselves. We come across a lot of people that are so stubborn and stuck in their ways that they, they're so angry at the past hurt. They're angry at someone that hurt them. And here David is crying out to the Lord God himself, Amen. saying, Lord, have mercy on me. And he's teaching us. When I was in sin, I'm not saying I don't sin because I have to repent every day for some of the thoughts that come in my mind. But when I was heavy in sin and out there in the world, Psalms 25 saved me. Mm. Psalms 25 saved me. It's a couple of key verses in there that I can hear David crying out. I can feel him crying out to the Lord for Amen. forgiveness and for help. And to have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. So if you read down, right? We start at verse 1. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Already he's, he's humbling himself. He's on his knees praying, openly confessing with his mouth. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Amen. The R in the building all hats off. All hats off. Give the R a chance to take your seat. I have no problem with starting over. Amen. Sister Regina, we are in Psalms 25, beginning at verse 1. We're talking about a prayer of deliverance, guidance, forgiveness, and humility, which will in turn teach us all how to walk in love. Amen? Amen. We're in the book of Psalms, verse 25. thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgresses without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. He's still talking about humility. We go back back up to verse 3 when he says, Let none that wait on thee be ashamed. He's talking about the people of God who look up to God, who worship God, who are waiting on something from God. So if you're waiting, we, we, we've been talking about this for quite some time. If you're waiting on something from God, you have to humble yourself. And here David is saying, Let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed that transgresses without cause. I mean, he's talking about the Gentiles, the sinners. The people that don't worship God. But he's crying out. He's even petitioning for his own people. Let them that wait on that none that wait on thee. The people of God. All of us that are waiting on God need something from God. So let us not be ashamed to lift up our heads, open our mouths with confidence yes. to the Lord Come on. that He can and will deliver us. That's right. Verse 5, I mean, verse 4 says, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Meaning, I need to step out of myself now because my old self was stuck in a way that was not of God. Mm. That goes for any of us. When, when we get stuck in our ways, we cannot be used by God effectively. So David here says, show me thy ways, O Lord. I can't do it on my own. I can't do it by myself. My way is not the right way. Even though I may think it is, even though we may think it is, my way is not the right way. But here, here David is crying out for help. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. He's, he's, he's trusting and believing that God can and God will deliver him. So we have to trust and believe that God can and God will deliver us out of any affliction. Have Amen. mercy on me, O Lord. Amen, that's right. Have mercy on me. 
for I am desolate and afflicted. He says that later on, uh, going on in verse 16. But all this, this is a cry out for help. This is a this is a petition. He's petitioning God for to have mercy on him. And, and in turn, this will teach him how to love. So here we have David petitioning for forgiveness and humility. And, and, and he's humbling himself before the presence of the Father. It's important to remember that humbling yourself teaches you how to love. Come on. Amen? Amen. amen. I'm going to this side of the room because my amen section shut down. Yeah, you're amen. preaching good. Okay. Humbling yourself teaches you how to walk in love. It teaches you forgiveness. If you're guarded, if you're guarded, you can't humble yourself. You can't. It's, it's virtually impossible. If you're guarded from, so, if you're carrying so much baggage and so much hate, welcome to 2016. Amen. 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 Welcome to 2016. 2015 is a thing of the past. Every, you know, all the, I didn't see many of them this year. I didn't, on social media, I would see, you know, old, old me, new me. 2014, 2015, you know, new year, new me. I didn't see that this year. I didn't see that this year. Because I believe that people didn't honestly believe that. Mm. Though they posted it, they didn't believe it. Because yeah. they didn't understand what it means. Wow. I'm going to talk about the understanding in a second. Remember, these are not my words. These are straight from God right here. I'm going to walk you through the whole chapter and a little bit of chapter. First John, beginning at verse 1 eventually. So, David is on his knees asking for God for forgiveness and to teach him in his ways, meaning the Lord. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, in verse 6, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth. That could have been yesterday. Mm. Come on, come on. Jesus. I'm 39 years old. That could have been yesterday. Jesus. You ain't never lied. The sins of my youth. I was younger yesterday. I was younger 10 minutes ago. I was younger 20 years ago. Not those sins. Those are sins that I didn't know about. Now that I know, remember not the sins of yesterday. I could have committed adultery yesterday. Jesus. I could have been fornicating yesterday. Come on, preach you good. not the sins of my youth. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he would teach sinners in the way. There it is. That confirms exactly what I just said. The sinners, the meek, us, the weak. If you're asking God, the Father, to forgive you for your mistakes, your shortcomings, your sins, whatever it is you're asking God for, whatever you think it is, what you're saying is, I want to be loved. I want to be able to love. That's walking in humility. You have to be mindful of the things that you ask for of God. You have, to under, you have to have an understanding of what you're asking for. Because once you speak these words, God just may, may very well give it to you. That's why I kept pausing the movie the other day when we were watching um, uh, Deep Blue Sea. LL say, God always answers. But it may not be the answer that you want. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Come on. Preaching good. So if you're asking for God for forgiveness... You're asking God to teach you how to walk in humility, forgive, and love. And you're petitioning God for him to have mercy on you. So God is saying, if you want me to have mercy on you, you have to love how to love. Come on. You have to love how to forgive. You have to love to forgive. Here's what I mean by that. If I forgive you for something you did to me, I'm now walking in love and humility. If I forgive you for something you said to me or did to me, I'm learning how to walk in humility. If I'm forgiving you and forgiving myself, I'm learning how to walk in humility and love. It, it opens the door to let love in.